Hey everybody, it's Lon Seidman and we're back with another video about Starlink, which is SpaceX internet service that operates over low Earth orbiting satellites. And you'll recall back in February, we flew up to my brother's place in northern Vermont to get him set up on Starlink. He's loving it. It's actually changed a lot of things for the better for him, both personally and for his business. He can actually call us every once in a while. And of course, he's able now to market his business in a much better way because he can actually upload video. So check out those videos down in the playlist there to see what it was like to get him set up initially. And around the time that Josh was getting his internet installed, I placed a deposit down for a dish of my own because I needed something as a backup for where I live here in Connecticut. I'm in Southern Connecticut. I basically live in the forest. And even though I've got a pretty good internet connection now, I've got a wire that goes through six miles of forest to get to the Comcast head end. And every time we get one of these big storms, I'm usually out for a week and I'm sitting in Dunkin' Donuts parking lots uploading video. So I don't wanna deal with that. So I got a dish. I can start and stop the service anytime I want. There's no service commitment to it. So I'm gonna probably let the service run out for the next 30 days. I'm gonna stop service. And then if we find ourselves in a, another area of outages, I will reactivate and use the dish as my internet connection until the poles get reconstructed, which happens a lot. Now I do wanna let you know in the interest of full disclosure that I paid for the dish with my own funds along with the service. All of the opinions you're about to hear are my own. No one is paying for this review, nor has anyone reviewed or approved what you're about to see before it was uploaded. Now I set the dish up in my backyard and typically you're going to want to get the dish mounted up higher than I have it configured currently. And the reason is, is that the dish needs to be free of obstructions, especially for those of us in more Southern uh, latitudes as the service is rolling out. The uh, satellites will be more along the horizon for me than they might be for my brother up in Vermont. Uh, the area that I chose though actually looks pretty good from the Starlink app. Uh, what you can see here is the AR assistant that gives you an idea as to what your uh, install is looking like. And basically you wanna keep everything in the bright area clear of any kind of visible obstructions. And it looks like I was able to do that. And so far I have not received any obstruction issues in my statistics bar that is running on the Starlink app. I'll show you what that looks like in a minute. And what I'm going to be doing is letting the dish run throughout the weekend just to see if we ever hit any areas of obstruction. And if we don't, I think I've got a good spot here for when I need to get this thing set up for an outage. Now we did do a live stream the other day and I wanted to cut to a clip from that where we take the dish out of the box and install it. So let's roll that clip. Now, if you watch my last video, this is gonna look very familiar. We got the box. We got the big piece of plastic. <laughs> And then, oh, the, the, the thing looks different, doesn't it? Because yeah. Josh's was all black, mine is gray. Yeah. So it's, it's a different, uh, Josh might be interested in that. This, he was very intrigued with, uh, with what it looked like before. So we'll have to see how that goes. So this is the tripod base. You can buy roof mounts and other stuff. So there are um, other things that you can use to mount, but by default, it comes with the tripod. My brother actually was able to get this up on his roof. And like I said, I'm not gonna be going on the roof today. Now, this is the ethernet cable. This is powered over ethernet, and the power comes out of this box here. I don't believe this is weatherproof, so this has to be indoors, but this wire can obviously be strewn outdoors. Um, the one thing that a lot of people ask about is whether or not you can use your own router with it, and the answer is yes. So right now, plugged into it, basically everything comes plugged in. That's how easy they try to make this thing. Uh, plugged into it is a Wi-Fi router, this is like very basic transportation, but if you don't have a router, you can plug all this stuff in and you have a router. Um, and then they have an aux port here that you can plug your computer in directly. We're not gonna use this today because if you unplug their router and plug yours into the white port, it's basically like plugging into your cable service. So that's what we're gonna do. In fact, we're gonna plug my Mac in directly over ethernet um, to the dish. So that is the plan. And let's get our dish out and they call this whoa they call it dishy it actually feels different than josh's <laughs> i think they've made some changes to it because his was had a his had a rougher finish remember that yeah, yeah this is like totally smooth it's more like 
Yeah, it, it feels like they've made some changes to the hardware um, since, we, since we were out there. Now, the, the uh, cable here, I'm just going to disconnect it from the power supply for a minute. Um, the cable here is connected to the dish on one end, and then you've got an RJ45 on the other. So that's how that goes. And I'm just going to go over here, Jake, and we're going to put it on the pedestal, as long as you can keep following me here. So let's get that in here. All right, it snaps in and that's it. That's all you got to do. And unlike one of these geosynchronous uh, satellite things, all you have to do is put the dish in a spot and plug it in, which is what we're going to do now. So I'm going to walk out to my designated spot. And earlier we got um, that spot staked out as I showed you with that, that video I took earlier. And it's got to look for that spot in the ground, <laughs> Jake, that I, <laughs> that I marked. Oh, here it is. There we go. Okay. And I'm just going to stick it right here and we'll see how it does. So let's plug it in. All right. It's lit up. Now, once we plug the dish in, it took it about 15 or 20 minutes to get positioned. Uh, once it's powered on, it will point itself directly up at the sky. And I'm guessing it's doing that to try to figure out where the satellites are. It stayed in that position for probably about 25 minutes or so. And then after it was done doing whatever it was doing, it positioned itself towards the northern sky. And you'll see it do that uh, right here in this clip. It kind of adjusted itself a little bit there and then it pointed itself. And then uh, within about five minutes or so after that screen went blank on us on the left, uh, it came back up and we suddenly had internet service. And it looks like that 30 minute wait to get the thing up and running is only on the first use. I did take the dish inside after the live stream yesterday. And then this afternoon I put it back out to do some long duration testing. And once I plugged it in, it was up and running within five minutes today. So it looks like that initial configuration will uh, take a little bit longer. But if you do shut down and restart, it shouldn't take you all that long to get up and running. Uh, we did run some speed tests and they have made some big strides in performance. We're pretty much seeing double what we were seeing at my brother's place back in February. Uh, we got up to about 300 megabits per second here on this particular test on the downstream. And the upstream speeds have improved as well. We were getting north of 20 megabits per second here on this run, which is very, very good. I am really just surprised by how good the service works. But not every test we ran was as fast as that one. And one thing I think we'll be seeing with Starlink in these early days, especially in more southern locations, is that you will have some variability based on what satellites are in view of your location. And over time, as the constellation builds out, I think we'll see a more consistent level of service, at least when it comes to bandwidth. Uh, Netflix and other video services work well. Uh, while we were sitting out in my backyard, we were running YouTube and jumping around to different parts of a 1080p video. And it's all just very responsive and you don't feel like you're actually communicating with a satellite orbiting the Earth. Now, latencies are also a bit variable. Uh, one thing we did to test that was connect up to the Shadow Game Streaming server that I'm subscribed to. That is run out of a data center in New York City, and obviously low latencies are really important for that. So let's have a look and see how that performed. All right, so here is the Shadow service. Again, running this out of my backyard. Uh, and if you look at the yellow chart there on the right, we'll zoom in on it here in a second, uh, you can see that the latency kind of doubled over the time that we were watching it. And I think that involves the handoff from one satellite to the other and what ground station perhaps that satellite might be connecting to. Again, it's early days here for this service, especially as far south as I am. And I was noticing that we were jumping around to different test servers when we were connecting to speedtest.net as well. So you're not gonna have a consistent latency experience here, but I did find the connection was very reliable, even though the latency was going to bounce around a bit. So this was a screen capture that we did of the game that we were playing uh, through the shadow server. We were basically running at about a 50 megabit per second uh, bit rate, and it was able to keep up with it just fine. It looks great. We weren't seeing any Thing dropping off or breaking apart. Again, a little bit of latency variation, but that might be hard to see. 
Uh, this is the chart that we were running uh, from the Starlink data statistics while we were running that game. You can see some of the details there. But overall, I have to say it was running pretty nicely and it was actually running better than it was at my brother's place in Vermont when we tested it there. Now, as you saw a second ago there, Starlink does give you a statistics page so you can monitor the health of your connection. I'll pull it up here again so you can see what it looks like. And for a bulk of my testing yesterday, it was pretty stable. It was actually running very, very well. Uh, you can see all the different things that it's measuring on an ongoing basis, and you also uh, get a 24-hour look back to see how things have been going overall. I'm going to be letting my dish now run for the next 24 to 36 hours just to get a better idea as to how mine performs over the longer haul uh, because I want to compare my experience to what The Verge just wrote about in their article. Uh, the Verge had a lot of obstructions in the way and I want to see if my uh, less obstructed view might result in better performance. Now during our test we did have one dropout that occurred and what was funny is a friend of mine around the corner uh, also has a Starlink dish and his went out at exactly the same time. And if you look at uh, the color of the indicators there, they're gray for the most part. And gray means that you had a drop off due to a beta issue, which I assume means it's on Starlink's end and not yours. If you see a red indicator, that says that you have an obstruction that was preventing you from getting service. And we'll see how many of those obstruction errors I get uh, over my 24 to 36 hour test here as we're running through things. There's also a yellow indicator that would tell you there was no satellites overhead and we'll see how many of those we get as well and stay tuned we'll be reporting that on Monday. Now we also did a live stream from the backyard off of my laptop so that's why the video quality isn't great but that stream did go out to my extras channel over the Starlink dish. It was broadcasting 720p, I think at 30 frames per second, at two megabits per second. And what I was most interested in was whether or not it can maintain uh, that bit rate over a extended period of time. And it was able to do that. So I think uh, if you are planning to do live streaming, it'll work. Uh, there might be some drop offs though, because we are in that beta phase. So just be prepared for that. But YouTube was able to keep the stream up and running the whole time. We did, though, saturate the upstream bandwidth when we did a speed test at the same time we were streaming. Uh, but beyond that, it was able to hold its own. Now, you saw Jake, who helps me out here on the channel in that video with me, and I gave him a call on his cell phone from my laptop that was connected to Starlink. So we went through Google Voice. I dialed his number. His cell phone was connected to the cell tower but his voice was coming into my laptop through the satellite connection, and you can get a feel for what the latency looks like in this clip. Hello. Hey, Jake, it's Lon, how are you? I'm good, how are you doing? Good, it doesn't seem like there's much latency on the, uh, the phone here, does it? No, it sounds just like a regular phone call, really. So, so far here in Southern Connecticut, things are looking pretty good. I am gonna let that dish, though, run for the next day and a half, and I'll report back uh, what kind of service levels I was seeing over that period of time. I'm very eager to compare my results to The Verge because The Verge did their testing with obstructions in the way and it looks like I don't have that many obstructions. So we'll be back on uh, that very shortly. I did check in with my brother before I started recording the video today. He sent me back this screenshot of his statistics page on his dish and he only had two minutes of downtime over the last 12 hours. So he's definitely seen an improvement in service availability since we were up there in February. And that's due to more satellites now being in view of his location versus when we started. And I expect we'll see that same increase in service level as more satellites get into position. And we're gonna talk a little bit more about that on Monday. Now, a couple of months ago, I did answer some frequently asked questions about Starlink. A lot of those answers are still relevant to now, but if you have a question that was not covered, let me know in the comments and I might do a follow-up video because I do intend on playing around with this dish for the next 30 days or so before I uh, put my service on hold. That's going to do it for now. Thank you all for watching. And until next time, this is Lon Seidman. This channel is brought to you by the Lon.TV supporters, including Gold Level supporters Chris Allegretta, Tom Albrecht, Mark Bollinger, Sergio Morales, 
Mark Dell, Jim Callagher, and Stephen Sue. If you want to help the channel, you can by contributing as little as a dollar a month. Head over to lon.tv slash support to learn more. Don't forget to subscribe. Visit lon.tv slash s.